I have been asked many times about uh, something called a, a split cleat or a French cleat. Um, we, we, I grew up with it being called a, a split cleat and then people in the US started referring to the same thing as a French cleat. So obviously something derived from somewhere, but basically it's a piece of wood like this that's been split in a certain way and it's for hanging things like this wall shelf. And that, some of you have asked how you can hang the bookshelves uh, to the wall like this. So we're going to take this cleat here and we're going to split it a certain way. And I'll show you the simplest way to do that. If you take a piece of wood, this is an inch and a half by three quarters, and this could be 10 feet long. This is just long enough to fit right in between the two sides here. And generally that's what we do. And then it won't slide off. Split this distance. This is an inch and a half. So that's 38 millimeters, I think. So we would come here about half an inch like this for a third of the width and pull that line here, flip it like this edge for edge and do the same on this one, half an inch again from here. Like that. And then if you take this line and pull this one out, pull this one out, and then join these two lines together like that. And now we're going to rip down this with a handsaw. Like this. Stop when you get to the blue bit, that's the vise. And you don't want to go into the vise. That last little bit, if you've got straight grain pine, just pull it apart like that. And you've got the two halves. Take a chisel. That wide one. And just chisel loose fibers level with the main length of your saw kerf. And then we're going to plane up these two surfaces. Technically, we don't need to. Technically, we could just leave them as they are because they're never going to be seen. Just go until you get a clean surface and a continuous saving. I don't need a sharp edge on here, so I'm going to just take a couple of shavings off there and see what we end up with. Nice, clean, angled cut. Same on this one. Now on one of these pieces, it doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to go with this thinner one. I did my saw kerf on one side of the line, so it ended up with one being slightly wider than the other. So right in from this end, it doesn't really matter where. I'm coming in about an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter here, and then about three quarters, it doesn't matter here, and the same here. Like that. And then in from this edge here, again, it doesn't matter, quarter of an inch. So this is three quarters of an inch wide, quarter of an inch from that back face, just to give you a guideline. Take your chisel right on that line till, until you get down to this corner here. Nice and crisp. 
And then on this one the same. Nice and simple. So you can see now what we've got on each side there. Now, just so you can see, I'm going to do this towards the camera. Normally, I would turn it around for my benefit. Take a smaller chisel. Don't go to your line. Just go down one side, down to that corner there, that internal corner, like this. And then go down this one. Chisel this one down, just to your line. None of this is really critical. It's just good to set yourself a standard of accuracy and work to your lines. But this is actually isn't going to be seen once it's completed. I'm going to put this on the bench top and I'm going to just set my chisel, just chisel down this face into the corner and that's it. Can you see that? So that's one done. So the same on this one. If you need to use a chisel hammer, go ahead. I just stayed away from my line and now I'm right on my line. Just get a nice crisp internal corner. And pair down this face here. Just to level it out really. Like that. And that's all my chiseling done. I'm going to put this in the vise and then I'm going to use a, a brace. And a 3 16 bit, that goes with the size of screws that I'm using. And you just have to pick the size of screw according to your material. Right in the middle of this recess here, drill a hole. And you want to countersink that. Now, well, you won't need to countersink this part, but you will need a, a countersink in a minute. Chisel, just chisel off these uh, exit fibers here from when we drill the hole. Now you've got to get this right, this next bit. <sighs> Here's my shelf. Now I haven't glued my shelf up yet because I'm not ready to, because I thought that putting the cleat on is more important. So you have to think through this bit now because this is going to hang on the cleat this way. So this is going to the wall. This is going to go this way. So this now has to be screwed in between here. I'm going to pop my top off because I left this so I would have easy access to it. This goes here, on here. So we're going to screw that on. I'm just going to get that countersink. And I may as well countersink this just for peace of mind really. As I said, this pine would compress just fine. I've got a square all here. So I'm going to flush this. I'm actually going to leave this slightly. This is flush now. I'm going to move it so I have a very slight step away from that back edge, just less than half a millimeter. 
that will make the uh, cleat draw tight to the wall when I drop this on. Make your first mark, make your second hole point, and then this is a square hole. So if I do a full rotation, this creates a conical hole that will receive the screw the same, and the threads of the wall of the screw will bite into the wall very nicely. So I'm going to put a bead of glue along here. For added security, it probably wouldn't need it on a shelf this size, but on a, a longer shelf, it would definitely need it. Especially if it was taking books or something. I'm using slot head screws because I like the look of them. Make sure they're not coming through in my bench. Great. And now I would be ready to glue up. We're not going to glue this right now, but I'm going to finish this off and even hang this to a pseudo wall. So you can see where we end up. There, like that. A little bit of glue. So now we've got the cleat fixed to the shelf. This, this other half of the cleat is going to actually go here, but on the wall. So if this was going on a um, a stud wall or something like that, you'd have to use some kind of screw fixing to fix this to the wall. So we're going to drill holes through here to screw to the wall. And I've got a pseudo wall that I'm going to show the whole of the process. Meanwhile, just for now, I'm going to drill the holes in here. This was the first ever cordless screwdriver. There you go. Very simple, very effective. It works just fine for this. Now I don't need a countersink on this side, but I'm going to countersink it just to get rid of the burrs or the fibers. Like this. And on the other side, I'm going to do the same, but this is actually going to be the countersink to receive the screw head. So it, it lines up flush with the surface when I'm done. So is that the same distance from either end? You want to make sure they are the same. See, I didn't measure it, I just eyeballed it, and they came out the same, but if you need to measure it, make sure you do. So here's my dummy wall here. And, and what we're going to do is uh, anchor this to the wall. So wherever you position it, maybe somewhere here, anywhere here really, equidistance it. That's probably long enough, I think. Yeah. So if this was brick, you'd have to drill the brick and plug it and then put the screws into the brick. If it was a stud wall, you might try and find the studs. And if it's a wooden wall, you're well underway. So just check that for level. Yeah. 
and the second screw hole. This wood's harder than it looked. And now, this just slides onto the wall. Like that. And it'll anchor it level and it holds it there. And that's it, that's basically what a split cleat or a French cleat is all about. 